Right, so here at the Shack News booth, we are continuing our hour-long talk with Microsoft about their lineup. Uh, yesterday, we had several Microsoft personnel on. Today, we are running through the rest of their lineup. That was Halo Wars 2. Now, we are bringing around our next guest, and, and, the, and the game that he is here to talk about should be fairly obvious from his shirt. So, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing uh, amazingly well. The amazingly game is going well. down a storm. It's yeah, uh, yeah. great to see real players playing the game. Like after announcing it last year and getting it into real players' hands here today and seeing the reception, it's mind blowing. That's great. great. It's That's going great. really well. So uh, before uh, we get into the meat of it, uh, can you give a quick introduction of your, yourself and your role with the team? Yeah, sure. So I'm Mike Chapman. Uh, I'm lead designer on Sea of Thieves. Cool. And, yeah. Cool. So. Yeah. So let's uh, play the trailer. We're gonna talk over it. Cool. But <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> let's take a look. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Sea of Thieves is a cooperative adventure game. It's set in this shared world where every sail that you see on the horizon is another player. And there's there's all these things to do in the game. We showed the cinematic trailer yesterday at the briefing where it's full of all these piratey tropes of going to find buried treasure, fighting these uh, legendary creatures, uh, having engaged ep epic ship battles, going and exploring this like huge pirate world. It was really important for us to not build this kind of dry, realistic, gritty pirate game. It's a pirate fantasy and we're, we're inviting players to be the pirate they want to be. So if you want to be the, the player that just explores the world or be the player that kind of gravitates towards combat, the guy that um, customizes their ship, or just goes after quests, you, you, you can do all these kind of different things in the game. It's really important for us that different players have different player motivations. And, and at the heart of the game, it is a cooperative multiplayer experience. But if you want to be the solitary pirate who just heads out there on a small ship and explores the world on their own, you can do that too. But what's unique is that the game is shared world. So even when you are playing on your own, you're still going to be in there with real players. It doesn't mean that you're going to be beset by other players. It means that you might see a sail on the horizon after you've been out on adventures. And what's cool is that you know it's a real player. So you might look through a telescope, check out the type of ship it is, see what upgrades the ship has, and may think, well, where are they going? What do they want? What's their intent? It's that's the magic of the game, and it's just it's just incredible to be able to share more about it. Cool. So how how do you um, on a technical end how do you populate uh, this world? It's not it's not a pure MMO, uh, as far as I can tell. It's it's not a straight up MMO where you have you know, thousands and thousands of players sort of all in the same space. But like, I'm assuming when you're sailing, if somebody else is sailing around the same area, you'll, you'll see them. So how, do, how does the game do that math? Yeah, it was, it was um, I mean, firstly, it was really interesting to see the types of labels the game was getting after the announce last year. And an MMO crops up quite a lot. I mean, a, MMOs are an interesting term. I mean, I, I don't think we really consider it an MMO in the sense that um, MMOs have quite abstracted mechanics, you know, that, that where our game is it's very immersive. We're trying to build the most immersive pirate game ever made. And like all the kind of, like the size of the world, the servers, I mean, we're, we're not going to surface that to players at all. We're trying to build this immersive world where you're in there, you feel like you're in this pirate world you can just get lost in. And you can do all the piratey things you can imagine. So, you might be with a crew just exploring the world, you know, having a little adventure on your own, all bonded together, having this great pirate crew experience. And then sometime on your adventure, you, you can't plan it, you might come across another like, crew of players and it gives that the kind of dynamic emergent feelings to the game and it plays differently each time. It's 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 a magical experience, it really is. You know you could call this an MMORPG. Well <laughs> We I like the thousandth person to, to make I, that no, joke, I'm sure. I, I, I like it, I like it. But what what we uh when we were talking about the game, we were talking more about the vision of the game. We, we've been calling it a shared world adventure game. Yeah. And interestingly, the acronym for that is SWAG. Yeah. So a <laughs> game is a SWAG that game. Works, that which works is, great. Yeah. It's perfect for this pirate fantasy. Yeah. If only there was something with loot that you could do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we thought about that. No. But yeah. uh, <laughs> so um, it, it does have a, a, a that unique uh, rare visual stamp where it, yes. it looks very friendly and very inviting. Yeah. It's like you said, it's not this, it's not this gritty game. Yeah. Um, can you talk sort of about the, the, the rare philosophy to the to the visual approach behind these games? Sure. I mean, just in general, it's probably important to, to kind of call out that if you look back at those like those classic rare games over the years, a lot of them have always had references to pirates. So it almost feels like this is almost the culmination. Like Rare was destined to make this pirate game, but the you know the, the art style we've got Ryan Stevenson, who was the art director on uh, Viva Pinata, 
that like which still looks great today I mean I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would agree timeless art style I mean, we're really going for something really timeless yeah when, when are we getting a new Viva Pinata by the way <laughs> I love Viva, I love Viva Pinata like an unreasonable amount I'm sorry Viva Pinata I, I, was incredible I had to game. interrupt you because you mentioned the name and I was like no, no, no it's, it's a great it's 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 a great game one one of my favorites but uh, we're just here to talk about I know I know I'm teasing you <laughs> I'm teasing you can you can so uh, tell us about the the quests for treasure like what when you're rolling with a crew or whatever mm. like what's What's the day-to-day -day, uh, a session of a game look like in this? So, we're, I mean, we're not kind of talking specifics. I mean, there's what we're showing. What we're showing at the booth is a very small slice of the experience. So, we 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 wanted to show off ship combat because it felt perfect for kind of a short session experience where people can play for maybe 20 minutes, have a blast, understand the way that mechanics work in the game. Um, but we wanted to show the cinematic trailer, right? So. Yesterday, uh, sorry, Monday, sorry, in the briefing, we showed the cinematic trailer, which shows the breadth of the game. It shows the maybe like what quests might be. But if you think about pirate tropes, like all of those classic kind of pirate experiences in films and books and other games, just that kind of fills your head with what quests might be. So all, so, I'll, all I'll say is pirate you, ghosts. <laughs> it's a fantastical world. It's a fantastical world. If you see the trailer, there's there's so much stuff in there, and it's it's. So many creative things that we're kind of looking to do with this game. So all I'll say is you, you haven't seen anything yet. You really haven't. So the the sort of gameplay demo that we saw, um, yeah. I think on stage at the Microsoft conference, uh, was it, it? It was really interesting to me because it was. Uh, it seemed like you just threw people in, and yeah. the fun was them watching them kind of figure out, yeah. like, oh, to sail we need to lower the sails, obviously, you know. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. <laughs> like oh. people do not know how to how to sail a ship. In modern day, <laughs> yeah. So, it, it was. Yeah. It was uh, when we got the the uh, the competition winners over to Rare. It was a, it was a blast. That was the first time any anyone outside of Rare had really played the game. So like we were, we kind of, we were confident in what we were building naturally. But we, you know, to have that confirmation from real players playing it, and we we just. They knew they were coming to Rare, they knew they were going to play Sea of Thieves, but we didn't tell them anything about the game. We didn't tell, give yeah. them any tutorials, any help. We just threw them in and said, go be pirates. And uh, just to see them sell the ship within like five minutes, it was, we were like, we were almost, we were like choked up. We were choked up watching them play. We were like, it was an emotional moment, just incredible. So how, uh, how steep are the penalties when you, when your ship, let's say, sinks, which we saw in the demonstration, mm. you know, the, the, the cabin was filling up with water and they were like, yeah. oh, we have to abandon ship. Yeah. Uh, like, do you just, okay, let's re-roll, get another ship? Or is there, like, um, do you get set back a little bit and you need to sort of rebuild up, rebuild yourself up? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time, uh, as you can imagine, kind of working out what the balance of losses in the, in the game. Um, I mean, with a lot of sandbox experiences, it's probably fair to say that um, they're pretty punishing. Um, and we, we want this game, especially with the theme, especially with the vision for the game, to reach a broader audience. So. Um, there will be penalties, there will be consequences, but it's not like you're going to lose all your progress or you have to start again. The, the, will we going to strike the right balance? Yeah, you need to have like a little bit of a penalty or else people don't value their ship. Of course, no. you, you want to keep people on their adventures. And they, I mean, who knows what they're going to experience when they're on those adventures. You don't want to kind of reset players back all the way or lose their progress too much. It's you want to just keep them having, just keep them immersed in the world. That's what we're going to try and do. So how big is the... Well, I guess, where is this taking place? Is it, you know, Caribbean islands? Like, what what area does this cover? So, I mean, it's Sea of Thieves is, is it's pirate fantasy. So, it's... It's not necessarily a real life? Well, thing. I mean, we're not really talking specifically around that. I mean, there will be, there will be kind of lore to the game. There will be kind okay. of legends in the world. It'll all kind of, like, done intuitively and done immersively. Um, but, yeah, we're not, we're not really talking about specifically okay. the backdrop to the world yet. Okay. Just yet. So like, if I just pick a direction and sail, yeah. uh, what are the odds I'm going to hit land if I just don't even try to like, so you know, like move 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 towards land or anything? I'm just sailing in a straight line. So like, the, the, <laughs> how densely packed I guess are the islands? The, the world is. So we want to balance, right? So there's going to be, of course, as you would expect, there'll be clusters of islands where players can kind of island hop and do their quest there. But you want a mixture of like shorter voyages and longer voyages. If people want the that kind of epic voyage when they're out there on the open sea and all they can see is water, um, that's going to be in there too. If they want to just focus on a small set of islands that are close together, they can do that too. But crucially, what's important to call out is the world is completely seamless. So when you're in that world, this huge world, it has this massive scale, um, there's, there's, no, there's no load times. You're just going from one part of the world to the other. And you could just, like you say, you could just pick a point on the horizon and just point your ship in that direction and just head there. 
but crucially you might want to have someone in the crow's nest to call out kind of dangers that might be in the world that could threaten your ship. So obviously uh, PC is a, a big focus for Microsoft right now. Yeah, absolutely. Cross play, cross yep. buy, uh, all of those sorts of things. Yeah. Is this is this Xbox only PC as well? What are, what are so your plans it's there? So it's an Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusive. Uh, and obviously the Xbox Play Anywhere um, was, a, was a big part of the, of the briefing, right? So we, we're not confirming that we are that, that we are doing it, but it, it, it obviously... It's, it's really still exciting. on the table, let's it, it, say. It really, it's so exciting, it really is. And um, it, it kind of feels like it, it kind of suits the experience we're building. So we, we are going to look at it. Um, and we're just going to just just see where where we can make the most of it in our game. Cool. Uh, I, I'll, I'll leave you with one one more quick question. Uh, can you confirm pirate shanties? Are we going to have shanties? Uh, I, I can absolutely <laughs> confirm pirate shanties. If oh, you, awesome! If, if you see the gameplay trailer, you'll see the musical instruments. So players can like form like play their own little music on the ship and be able to play that music anywhere. So you might be able to go into battle like. Like get your instruments out and just taunt the event. enemy by playing the shanty. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, well, like it's sh perfect. shanties that have different emotions. So <laughs> you might want to like ones that like are almost like little ditties that are quite humorous, and ones yeah. that are almost like quite intimidating for all the crew. So yeah, it's, players can express themselves through those instruments uh, quite a lot. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, I'm you're gonna, very welcome. I'm That's gonna cool. let you go. Thank you very Looking much. Looking forward to the game. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> tell them, tell them how much I want uh, Viva Pinata while you're while you're going back to the. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass the message on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we are getting ready to go to our last scheduled appointment for our uh, Microsoft medley. Yeah. 